it's Omnidog here, Omnidog's Vault, with some ideas for you. If you like the Authority Omnibus or the Authority Comics that uh, just came out, the Authority is probably my favorite Omnibus that came out this year so far. I'm talking about this, of course, Warren Ellis and Mark Millar. I love this book. And it has a lot of spinoffs that you can read. If you like this book, I've got a lot of suggestions about some reading you can do. Um, it's actually got a prequel that helps set it up. You don't have to read this to enjoy this book. It does have Stormwatch before it. Um, you don't have to read Stormwatch before it, I don't think, but I'll go over Stormwatch now. Um, I read Stormwatch a while ago, uh, Stormwatch Volumes 1 and Volume 2. Um, now, Volume 1 in hardcover and trade paperback, badly out of print. So what's going on in Stormwatch? Uh, this contains Stormwatch Volume 1, uh, is by Warren Ellis, same with Volume 2. This contains Volumes 37 and 40 through 47. And then this is Warren Ellis, Volumes 48 through 50, and then it resets its Volumes 1 through 11. This one, Volume 2. Uh, I'm sorry, when I say volumes, I meant issues 1 through 10, 1 through 11. Issues 1 through, <laughs> I'm screwing it up. Issues 37 through 47, issues 1 through 11. 48 through 50, issues 1 through 11. I'm all messed up because it's a, the, the issues are a little mess, messed up. I'll get to that in a sec. But this is Warren Ellis's setup. It does set up the authority. In a way, it's got a completely different cast than what the Authority has. This is Stormwatch. I don't think it matters if you read it before or after because it's a completely new cast in the Authority. So you can read it ahead of time. It, it might help you a little bit uh, to read it ahead of time. Um, I read it afterwards and I was fine. It didn't matter to me. I was just like, oh, that's interesting. Um, it's got very nice art by Tom Rainey. And it it doesn't it doesn't contain really hardly any of the same the characters are completely different than in Planetary. It starts out with Henry Bendix. As the weatherman, he's the leader of Stormwatch. Um, Stormwatch continues into Volume 2, which, as I said, has issues 48 through 50. Then issues start over again, 1 through 11. Uh, and now, if Volume 1 is so hard to find, what do you do? How do you read it? It is totally worth reading. Get it digitally. Just go ahead. I mean, you can try and find it on eBay. I wouldn't go to Amazon. It's too expensive. You can try and find volume one trade paperback or hardcover on eBay. If you're patient, you can get it for about $10 over cover. Cover price is $30. Uh, if you're patient, you could probably find it. But I mean, why bother? Because here's the kicker. And I know some of you are going to go out there and just go, oh, this sounds like too much trouble. It's not that big of a deal. If you're doing it digitally, just go ahead because yes, this is the famous problem child issue. In between issues 10 and 11, as I said, it's got issues 48 through 50 in this and then issues one through 11. Between issues 10 and 11, there's a Wildcats versus Aliens crossover where, spoiler alert, the Stormwatch team basically gets killed in this crossover, and there's a hard reboot. And 
basically the authority team is created, sort of. Um, and this never gets reprinted because of the aliens IP, intellectual property problem. It never gets reprinted. So of course I went on eBay years ago and got this so I could figure out what the heck was going on in this book. But if you're getting it digitally, just buy this issue digitally or however you get your comics, whatever, just get this issue, read it between issue 10 and 11 and you'll have no problem. That's right. Wildcats versus aliens, volume one. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Issue one. I keep making that mistake. And you read it between issues 10 and 11 of Stormwatch volume two. It will explain the whole thing. And if you're reading it digitally, it's not a big deal. You just read it. So it's not a problem. And if you want to be obstinate, don't get it. And just go ahead and read the thing. And you'll make up something in your head. But it's good. It's Warren Ellis, top notch, great reading. Just read it digitally. Comixology, however you get your digital comics. It'll help you understand a little bit more of authority, gives you a framework, gives you a little guide. No characters are the same. It's just a really good story. And spoiler alerts, Bendix shows up about 90 other times in all of these um, books that I'm going to show you. Um, okay, so... Jack Hawksmore and Jenny Sparks are the only constants in these books. Really. Otherwise, everybody else dies. Spoiler alert. Um, but they're great. So then what do you do? What do you read after that? Midnighter. The Complete Collection, the Complete Wildstorm series. Midnighter is a great character. He's been likened to Batman, and Apollo has been likened to Superman, the Wildstorm sort of versions. Um, Warren Ellis, I'm sorry, <laughs> Garth Ennis uh, writes the first two story arcs. Very big story arc, and the very first, um, very first thing is that Midnighter is tasked with going back into the past and killing Hitler, uh, because, um, well, because Hitler, and but he runs into trouble with the Time Police from like the 29th century. So it becomes a whole thing. Garth Ennis writes a great story. And then after that story, he has Midnighter as basically back in feudal Japan, which was a very interesting story. Really good. Art by Glenn Fabry. And then you've got a Brian K. Vaughn story that is told backwards. So I kind of cheated and I went, this is the end. So I cheated and I went to the beginning, to the, the end and started from there and started and read it from the, uh, from where it uh, ended and it's told backwards. So I cheated and went, to, and it was really good. I really enjoyed it. Brian K. Vaughn wrote a great book, a great story arc. And then there's a lot more great Midnighter stories. A lot more great Midnighter stories in this book. It's a big, fat collection. I really enjoyed this book a lot. If you like Midnighter, and you should, this is a great collection. So this was really good. 
you can read that right after Stormwatch, or if you've already read Stormwatch, just pick this up. After this, what do you do? I bought them digitally, but you can pick them up either digitally or, okay, I'm gonna show them to you digitally. Midnighter, first volume is called Out. And then the second volume is called Hard. And they're by Steve Orlando. Let's see if I do this right. Yep. Second volume is called Hard. Whoop. Jump back. There you go. It's called Hard. Both. I kind of am hot and cold on Steve Orlando. Both of these books were great. I really enjoyed them. Now, you have to read those two books before you can read Midnighter and Apollo, also by Steve Orlando. So before we get ahead of ourselves, you need to read those two Midnighter books, and then you can read Midnighter and Apollo, also by Steve Orlando. Midnighter, both those volumes, great reads by Steve Orlando. Um, I really enjoyed the art. I really enjoyed the stories. They were great. Um, and in this book, um, Bendix shows up again. Whoops, I don't think I can show you that. Bendix shows up again. He's going to show up throughout all these books. And he sells Apollo's soul to Lord Neron, who is the ruler of hell in DC's universe. Um, Midnighter decides to go to hell and save Apollo's soul. Great concept. Really great book. I thought this was a really well-written book. Really great concept. Really enjoyed it all. Midnighter and Apollo. So you read the first two Midnighter books. That'll set you up for all the characters in this book. Midnighter and Apollo. Then what do you do? Interestingly, Brubaker, my man Ed Brubaker, wrote a book called The Authority Revolution. It doesn't say revolution anywhere here, except on the back it says revolution. And if you scan it in on one of your apps, it'll say revolution. This does take some of the takes the characters from Authority, the Omnibus, directly. So you will recognize some of the characters from the Authority Omnibus and puts them, they try to take over the US government. There is an insurrection by some super powered old guys and there you recognize old Henry Bendix who's trying to uh, stick his fingers back in everything again. He's going to be a recurring theme, even though they seem to keep killing him. He keeps showing back up. Here are some of the characters from the Authority Omnibus. Uh, this book is great. I thought uh, the art by Dustin Wynn is really well done. Ed Brubaker has a great feel for the characters. Uh, it's not um, as interdimensional, uh, as science fiction-y sort of as Warren Ellis or Mark Millar does. Um, it's not uh, uh, sort of deals with the bleed as much as Warren Ellis does. This is more uh, political and down to earth uh, more 
than the Warren Ellis stuff, but it is really good. Ed Brubaker does a very solid, solid job, especially dealing with Jenny Quantum, the spirit of the 21st century. It's all about her maturing, and it is really good. And the new doctor, uh, I think you guys owe it to yourselves to check this book out because it fleshes out uh, the characters from the authority. Um, at the end of the Authority Omnibus, it fleshes those characters out a little more. Then some really fun stuff I can recommend because Warren Ellis starts writing The Wild Storm. And this is a completely hard reboot of the Authority stuff. Completely rewrites it. And with fantastic art by John Davis Hunt. Um, you get some familiar characters. There's not necessarily a sentient ship, but there are two to, well, there, there is a ship in this, um, but there is more of a, a corporate espionage feel to this book. Warren Ellis does write it, so it is out there. Um, there's an engineer in this. There is also the grifter kind of appears in this also. There's a bit of a wildcats feel to this. There's also um, Michael... Uh, Michael Cray appears in this, who I believe in the 90s was known as Death Blow in the Image universe. I didn't read any 90s image, so I'm just uh, throwing that Death Blow word out, assuming that it's correct. But look at this art. This is beautiful art. Um, and so I can't speak highly enough of these Wildstorm books that w Warren Ellis wrote. These are, fortunately for us, it's an ongoing series and it is fantastic. There are three trade paperbacks. I highly recommend them all. They're, uh, they're in the process of all getting collected right now. You can collect, uh, you can buy three of them and they are great. If you're into collecting single issues, there are, let's see. These collect one through 18. And I think as of right now, there may be 21 issues out, I think. Um, so it's an ongoing series. Warren Ellis so far is keeping up with the writing. John uh, Davis Hunt is keeping up with the art. And we can thank our lucky stars for that because I, this thing rocks really well. It is really, really good. I highly, highly recommend it. And Michael Cray, last recommendation from the pages, ripped from the pages of the Wildstorm, Michael Cray gets his own series, two volume series. It's really good. He's a character in the Wildstorm and he gets written by Brian Hill. And uh, Brian Hill is um, uh, a, uh, an excellent writer. I know him from Postal, which is a uh, series, of course, that I love. And the art is really good in here. And uh, Michael Cray is a paid assassin who, uh, for in uh, the wild storm he's a paid assassin for one side he switches over to the other side then i don't i don't know um at one point we're not sure what side he's on but in this book he's got something living in his brain we at first we think it's a brain tumor i think then it, we figure out that it's a living creature and it's really a fascinating really well done science fiction-y uh, assassin type of book that is really well done with fantastic art. It's got 
touches of Warren Ellis all over the pr place. But um, I, it, what's really fun is that these targets that Michael Cray has, this is book one. Uh, his first target's Oliver Queen. I will read it from the back. A sociopathic Silicon Valley billionaire who hunts humans for sport. Barry Allen, a paranoid police officer with a speed suit and a trail of broken bodies behind him. Arthur Curry, a deep sea scientist who's transformed himself into something more monster than man. Now that is a comic I want to read. If you're talking those names are who he's hunting down in the in this universe, I'm interested. So this is its own little pocket universe. It's um, completely different. It's its own little Wildstorm universe, but it is really well done, and I highly recommend it. So uh, we'll go over this again. Michael Cray, The Wildstorm by Ed Brubaker, The Authority, and I'll put these in the description. Midnighter and Apollo, and on my iPad was the two Midnighter volumes. The Collected Wildstorm series of Midnighter. And you should probably get this digitally, Stormwatch. Or try your luck on eBay for book one. Book two is easy to find, but book one is the harder one to find. So. Please feel free to leave a comment. I uh, always am happy to answer any comments or suggestions. If you'd like to see something reviewed or an overview of something, I'm happy to do that. Please hit the like button. Please feel free to subscribe. And as always, peace and love, peace and love. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it.